hey boys and girls what's going on this is Atava here and today we are going to make a weather app so what this will do is it will grab your current location and it will show your current weather so the thing is that i am making this app for the first time right now and i'll make it with you right now in this video so i don't have the app made and i will just experiment and let's see how, how it goes so first of all let's see how apis work right so i'll just open the screen brush let me show you okay so first let me show you how this client server thing works so first of all you have a back end and you have a front end right and now your front end is just basically a web browser so yeah it's basically a browser or maybe a app basically an ios ios or android app so it can be anything it can be even a desktop application so i'll even write desktop app right and what server is is basically it's a collection of some things so your know, uh, collection has basically a database here and after database you have a logic here basically your code so what happens is in your database all of your information is stored so and yeah so basically i'll just call it, call, call it the server main server yeah so now what happens is now whenever i need data from my database i won't actually ask my browser to get it from the database it's not ideal so how do i do that i make an api so what will happen is that the browser will contact the server and the server will get the data from the database and what do we call this this thing here we call it an api so basically an api is a middleman which helps us to get some data from the server because we cannot access the database directly because it's not ideal to use so yeah so that's how it works so how are we going to use this weather api we don't have a database we don't have a server but hey guess what we already have an api we don't need to think much here so what you see here is basically this is a huge api server which is managed by the weather uh, weather organization maybe whatever its name is i don't know open weather it's it's called open weather so yeah open weather is managing this and we don't need to do anything we only need to make the front end so this is basically our react website and maybe this can be our android app but we are not going to make android app here maybe in another video we don't know and what we do is we just send request here oh no it's not okay wait we just send request and when we get when we send request then we get a response and we can use that response in whatever we want whatever way we want in our react app so that's how this api server works so basically i'm just going to get started with you guys so let's see how it goes basically so first i will go ahead and get rid of screen brush hide screen brush now i'll go to terminal and i'll make a react app so basically let's go to react apps and here i will make a new react app npx create react app And here I will call it a weather app. Now till it, till it gets installed, let's talk about this API. So basically, we have the documentation of the API right here, and as you can see, we can just pass some things here. So basically, here we need this one. So we can set the latitude and longitude, and we set the API key, which we will talk in a, talk about in a bit. So when we send all of these things, we get we get some data back, and that's actually the weather. So how do we check all of that? So basically what you have to do is you have to log into this service. So it's very easy. Just go ahead and log in. And when you go ahead, oh yeah, basically it will just save me to log in. So I'll just log in here. And now you will go to the API key section 
and you need to make a api key it's free you can just make it and after you make it you will get this key so yeah basically i'll just change this key oh you know what no whatever happens this key should be kept private but for this video purposes i'm not keeping this private but after this video goes out i'll just change it so yeah so let's check on the terminal it's done so let's go to weather app and let's do code insiders dot so that i open visual studio code let's wait for it let's hit command j to open the terminal and i'll say npm start now let's wait for this this might take some time okay now before we get right into all of the react stuff let's first find out how this api key works right so let me this is the api key i'll just copy it right and what i recommend you to do when testing apis is install postman so basically postman is just a software for developers which helps you send http requests and basically a good way to test your apis so let me go ahead here and let me just paste this api key somewhere because we are going to need this so i'll just pull up edit text here i'll press new document i'll just paste this here because we need this now let's wait for postman here we go i'll just create a new tab here let's go back to the i guess api and when you go to api documentation in current weather data you will find something like this yeah so you can just grab this thing and you can just go ahead and paste this so basically i'll just put some dummy data for now so i'll just get random latitude and longitude hopefully it gives us something okay cool so i'll just pick this one copy let's do postman let's paste this and let's copy the longitude this is only for testing guys you don't need to do this in react app it will actually grab the location and do that same thing so you actually don't need to check your coordinates every time so let's go to postman just paste it in longitude i'll go to edit text I'll grab this API key and I'll replace this here. And once I click send, boom, now you have the data here. So, yeah, so the main, I guess this temperature is in Fahrenheit, right? So, if I do 301 degree Fahrenheit. Oh, oh god spotlight please oh no okay this is something is wrong here but let's see what's going on here temperature minimum temperature maximum oh wait okay let me just let me just go ahead please don't pick up oceans please don't pick up oceans oh come on now i'll just try this one out let's replace this And go ahead and I will just put on the longitude and paste it right here. Let's see what happens. Hopefully it doesn't get give like ridiculously large values. 226. So let's check it right now. 226. Oh, it's still a lot. I don't know what's happening here. Let's check the documentation so here basically we get okay so unit i guess oh 
oh so basically kelvin is used by default so we need celsius so you see guys right so once you are in the api documentation you can just find a lot of things which are which which you don't understand and basically you just find documentation and use like this and programming is all about research guys so this is the first time i'm making this and i thought like let's go ahead and just make a video like so that you can understand how i work behind the scenes to make all of this so so this is basically just units metric so we need to pass in unit metric so that it gives us in celsius so uh, i'll give it an and unit metric now let's try to send this okay something is still wrong units okay nice even bad okay it's perfectly fine because the location is was from antarctica or somewhere i don't know maybe on south pole maybe on north pole i don't know maybe somewhere like very cold place so yeah now here now if you go ahead you will see you it says clear okay and um, it gives us the temperature we have the wind speed we have all of the data so you have yeah basically you have the wind speed you have temperature you have yeah so basically all of the things we need we don't need a lot of things to make this so basically we'll just go back to our react app what i want to do now is i want to get rid of some files here no now we don't need to do testing let's get rid of this let's get rid of the logo let's get rid of the setup test we don't need all of them i'll just drop them to trash now it will just start freak out now i'll just go ahead and remove the logo import i'll just remove everything here i'll remove this i'll make this small now yeah so here i'll just go ahead remove everything we don't need and in index.css i'll add this add these properties to every element so margin should be zero and padding should be zero and box sizing should be border box so basically yeah let me just do this yeah i just forgot about it now i'll just save this and now if i go back to chrome you see everything is empty because we just cleared out a lot of stuff so what we need to do is basically we need to do an http request so how do we do that we need to install an package so i'll just create a split terminal here and i'll do an npm install axios so basically axios is a package which lets you send http requests and it's a better way of better way than using fetch because fetch is still a pain for some people but axios is just easy why why do you want to use fetch when you have axios so i'll just go here and i'll say import axios from axios perfect and now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna make a use effect function so what i want to do basically is whenever the um, browser loads the website i want it to do something at the start so basically what use effect does so let me show you what use effect does so where screen brush show screen brush so basically if this is your react app right and when it okay so basically this is your react app right and it you know that react has a lot of states so this can be a lot of states and what sometimes you need to have like when if i change this state uh, like um, okay if i change this state then i want the component to re-render or basically i want something to happen so what you will do so i'll just use something called use effect so what does use effect do so it has it contains a function it's a, it contains actually a callback function and it also contains a dependency array so what happens is when the depend in the dependency array if you have this particular state variable 
and what will happen is whenever the state variable changes this callback function will be executed so basically if you have a callback function which changes another state so basically you have a callback function which changes this state and now what happens because of the dependencies array if you change something in here the callback function will be executed and which in turn will change this state so what we are going to do here is let me just take this out we are not going to make any dependency arrays so it's so uh, so our dependency array will be empty so basically what use effect does is whenever the page loads it executes the callback function once that's because every time the state gets updated when the component is mounted so that's why it executes the callback function once now what you want to have is when you keep the dependency array empty then the function would be executed only once after the component is loaded so what we want to do is basically when the component is loaded then we fetch the weather so basically that's it that's basically it when the component is loaded you fetch the weather and that's why you use effect use effect for this that's it guys i mean yeah so let's let's just not waste any time let's go here i'll just hide screen brush uh, first time just get rid of all of this i'll hide screen brush now notice that this is the dependency array and this is empty so that's why use effect code will run only once so what i want to do is to keep the code clean what i want to do is i will execute a function called fetch weather right and another reason why i'm doing this because i need to use async await so i basically cannot give async to use effect basically you can but that's not a good practice basically that's that's it it's not a good practice so what i'll do is i'll make a new function this is the es6 style of making function so fetch weather and i'll be making a synchronized function here and now it will be like this and now i'll have a try catch block and in here i'll just do a console.error and i'll just print out the error because basically we should not get any errors with this unless you are timed out or something but hey there's a slight possibility every time so what we want to do and try now is we need to make a request we actually need to make a request so what we will do for, uh, first without checking anything we will just copy this url and we'll just paste it and see if we get any data in our browser so let's try to do this so const rest i'll just give it a name of rest and i'll just do await axios dot get so basically axios dot get makes a get request while if i just do a post it means it's a post request but i need the get request here because i am trying to get some data from the server so i just pasted the url remember the unit https here for that url to work and now here i'll just do console log rest dot data so let me explain you how this works first of all it will just try to make the http request and if it doesn't work it, it will just let me just show this again if it doesn't work if this particular code doesn't work it will go directly back to the cat statement right and but it if it works it just continues and it never goes back to the cat statement so basically this block is just for the errors so basically what this does what this thing does is when it has an error it just throws an error which in turn just goes back and we catch the error here so that the application doesn't crash abruptly so that's the entire logic here let me just close screen brush i'll just go ahead i'll just do console.log 
and oh we already did rest on data okay perfect let's go back to chrome let's go to inspect element now we got an object notice this now yeah this is so great we actually got some data from this right now let's let's just see what's this so basically you have a lot of things yeah it's it's just the thing you had before so now let's go back here now what you want to do is you want to get your current location and show it right in the box so how do you do that let me show you first of all you i'll just get rid of no we we actually need this so what we will do is first of all we will get the location so i what i will do is i'll do window dot navigator dot geolocation dot get current position right and what this will do we did it need a function so basically we will say save position to state and we will make a state right now so basically this is a function so what we will do is go outside here we'll make uh, we will make two new states first we will say x and we did a function set x basically this is just some react basics and we will do u state oh i need to import u state here and here i'll just say basically zero for now and then what will happen is i'll just do again y set y and i'll do u state and i'll set it to zero by default now what i need to do i'll make one more function which is save position to state And now what why now what is this function we have we get a position object so what happens is when this this is mentioned here it's just a reference of the function so basically what this function does it just passes the position in it so we have the position right here now what i can do is i can set x to position dot chords dot x it's just some javascript geolocation api it's nothing much set y and we'll do position dot chords dot y perfect now what i want to do is i want to await this because i want to wait for this before it should send a request right and yeah that's basically it we just wait for it because in async function this all runs simultaneously so i'll just wait for this and then i will send the request right so let's try to run this what happens okay so localhost 3000 wants to know your locations oh, oh no okay okay oh, i just blocked it okay anyways i we forgot something right first first let us change this to the yeah templating thing and now what i want to do is we need to change this thing so basically oh position dot core dots latitude wait was it latitude let's let's just check i guess it was latitude so javascript geolocation api so let's go here let's check this now so in here we will go get current position yeah it's it was latitude and longitude we just we just messed it up there so it's latitude and here it is longitude and basically we need to set this longitude and we will say set this as latitude so i'll just latitude set latitude Here I'll do longitude and here I'll do set longitude perfect now let's try to see what happens so let's get back to chrome we'll go ahead and 
I will allow the location. I will go ahead and refresh the page. Let's see. So basically something is wrong again. Yeah, so basically we haven't just haven't just changed this thing. So we need to change this because the we the browser is getting the location but we are not sending the correct location to the API. So we will set it set it to latitude and I'm gonna set it to longitude. And now we'll go ahead to Chrome. Let's see. Perfect. It got my city name though. Yeah, I'm I might have blurred my coordinates here. Mm, maybe I did. I don't know. Because uh, I I don't want to reveal my coordinates, of course. But I live in Nagpur, so yeah. It it literally got my location and the temperature so what i need to do is i'll just get rid of the chrome console because i don't want to blur everything for a long time now what we will do we'll start printing out data here so what we will do is we will go and make a couple few couple new states here so so i'll say weather and we will do set weather and we will set it to use state and we will just put put an empty string because basically it's a string value now we'll go ahead const set the temperature we'll do set temperature use state and we will do it zero because temperature is usually integer value so yeah now what we will do is basically we'll just print these out for now so what we will do is first of all we will also get a city name right so const city name set city name u state and we'll just do this right now because it's also a string so here we will first of all let's just see what happens so basically we'll just make a div and we'll just give it a class of basically I guess let's give it a class of app container we need we'll just center everything up so let's go to app.css what I'm gonna do is first of all I'll give the height or height and width of 100 so height I'll give it as 100 vh and now I'll go to app container and here what I will do is I'll just say for now first here I'll also make everything centered so to do that I'll do display flex align item center justify content center and in app container I'll just go ahead and and I'll just set the height and width I guess oh, I don't even need to do that I'll just set padding padding I'll just set like 30 pixels and I'll just give box shadow and I'll just say like 0 0 5 pixels black I guess that works let's check chrome what's going on here okay so it's it's not the best shadow but yeah so let's get back to our VS code now here what we will do first we'll make a giant touch one okay so here I'll just display the name city name so I'll just say city name and after that what I'm gonna do is in h2 I'm gonna display the temperature so I'll just display the temperature and here in h3 in h2 and I'll just display the weather Oh, I switched back to the wrong place. Okay, so basically it's just saying zero right now because we haven't just set some data there. So if we go here now after the request is completed, we need to do some some state state setting. So what we'll do? First of all, we'll check Postman. So this doesn't have my real location. So what I will do? 
is in our object we have a main thing and in main we have temp so that's temperature so how we will do it so we will do set temperature we will do res dot data dot main dot temp now let's save this go back to chrome now you will see it says 19 degrees celsius so it's not basically saying degrees but i'll just go ahead and add i guess i can add from here uh, letters and symbols i guess yeah Ah, uh, okay i didn't add the wrong right one but anyways just forget it i'll just do it like this not the city name please it's not the city name it's temperature yeah wait did i just did this uh, it's wrong it's h1 and it's the city name it's not a div perfect now let's get back to chrome okay okay that works now let's go back to vs code now we need to get the city name so how do we get the city name let's go back to postman and now here let's see where do we get the city name oh, okay we basically don't so i might need to blur everything again here so basically in console here yeah it's basically the name so okay so yeah it's basically the name so i will go here set city name rest dot data dot i guess just name so let's go ahead and check chrome yeah that's perfect and now what we want to do is we want to check back postman and let's see how the weather looks like so basically it's weather is an array so what we will do for simplicity we will just take the first element of array so basically it's just the first one element here right now and we will take the main so basically it will be rest or data dot weather zero and dot main so let's do that so set weather rest dot data dot Oh, what was that i forgot weather zero dot main okay weather zero dot main let's save this let's go back to chrome perfect that's so cool so basically whenever you reload this page okay why globe something is wrong okay i just thought that we made it but somehow it's just it's just not working so let's see what's happening here so let's go back to vs code and let's check the use effect so basically what we will do it we will provide an x and latitude and longitude dependency so that it executes every time so let's go back to chrome yeah basically now yeah now it works that's perfect so yeah it's sometimes just i don't know why what it does bro are you sure i mean what is this location let, let me know this what is this even a real location Algeria uh, okay something might be wrong something is super super wrong here globe Nagpur now it shows Nagpur ah yeah it will basically okay I think that's a browser thing because I think that's a browser thing right now. It's it's just it's just not getting my location properly. 
because the coordinates are passed in properly so yeah we just made the weather app using the pre-made weather api so yeah so you just go ahead make this try changing something and try to make this tutorial your own go ahead publish it on github go ahead and put publish it on your linkedin let people know that you made it and yeah that was it guys so if you liked the video so far because i tried something new this time because i thought that let's go try to try something different instead of me making the application first let's just make this application in front of everyone so yeah i did this and now if you like this video just go ahead like it subscribe to the channel if you haven't already because that supports me a lot and in future i'm going to bring a lot of content so go ahead and do all of that and you can also join my discord server link will, link will be in the description you can follow me on linkedin and instagram because i am quite active there and the link will be in the description i don't want to promote myself for a long time so that's it guys and i'll see you in the next one